All right, I thought I'd show you what I'm doing here before I do it. This is three solar panels and it is about 17 and a half feet or so. My rafters are 16 feet long. Uh, so, um, it would seem like it's not gonna fit, but the way that these mount, you know, they don't mount end to end and a little bit of overhang is fine. So the way they mount is, you know, this is gonna be spaced out more, but the, um, basically this, this first row, I'm gonna put, uh, let's go over to my measuring wall. Uh, what is that, 17, 17 and 5 eighths of an inch from center line. So if you imagine, uh, wherever I put this bottom panel, uh, this is the center line. So 17 and a half inches from here, and then 17 and a half inches from here, uh, that puts the, the wood cross beam that I'm gonna mount to basically centered uh, in the panel. So it'll hold it down tight. And then, so the panel actually sits on these, and then I have clamps that hold this in place, uh, or clamps that hold the panel to this, rather. Uh, I actually had to go get screws because I thought this shift was screws, but it didn't. But anyway, I'm gonna screw this into the wood. Um, gonna get uh, the wood in place, and we're gonna go from there. I think, ideally, I'd like to start from the top because I don't want, I guess it doesn't really matter where the overlap is. I could really put this, let's see, does it matter from weight or off-centered? I don't really think it matters if the panel's overhanging on the bottom. The only problem is it's gonna make it harder to collect rainwater the further off it is. So, Unfortunately, I think I need to start on the top uh, and work my way down spacing them out, but I really don't want to do that. It would have been easier to start on the bottom so I could put the next panel on top and have it, you know, supported with weight so it doesn't just roll on down. Um, but I think if I put it up there, I can kind of slide it in place and have a clamp ready to, to secure it. I don't think it'll be too bad. Uh, so we'll have to see how this goes. Um, today, all I want to get done is one row on here, and then I want to go all the way across the bottom. So that way I'll know um, from the top, right? I'll know where we're at there, and I can just work away across on the other rows. But the bottom is actually going to be a string that I'm going to hook up and power today. That wood is bowed, but that doesn't matter. It'll, uh, you know, the nails will suck it down just fine. Um, so I think, I think unfortunately I need to start on the top, which means I need two more two by four, no, six, uh, four more two by fours rather. Anyway, let's, uh, we'll get going and see how this goes. All right. I'll see you in a little bit.
All right, all done with one with the bottom row. I did have the biggest, you can see it right here. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it kind of dips down. And I think it's because I did it right on a split there. Um, and this one was a little bit higher than this one. I don't know why. I think it's because it was so warped. It just kind of pushed it up higher. So I think that's what caused that bow. It kind of looks uh, a little hideous there, but really everything looks uh, looks good. I can go over, uh, I'll, I'll hook them up tomorrow and kind of go over a rundown of the solar, um, how to hook them up. But there's the first row. Like I said, I changed the way that I did it because I put that second panel on up there and then I measured and there's plenty of room for the third panel up on top without uh, any, you know, making it hang off too far. Uh, so it can mount pretty much in the middle like, like these did. So that was, uh, that was pretty much it. The trickiest part was um, these little clips here. You, uh, this, you know, since this is painted black, uh, and it doesn't really, uh, conduct that well. And then the mounting hardware, you can't really see it, but it's black coated, uh, you know, paint. So that's not going to conduct very well. So they gave you, uh, well, I, I ordered these clips. Um, I didn't think that I had to do it, but after talking to their tech support, you really want to ground, uh, you can do it two ways. Either you can run, I mean, it even has a little wire, a uh, little symbol right there for ground. You can either connect every single panel together with a ground wire, or you can do this, which if you, um, I'll have to show you a clip, but it has these little teeth that kind of dig into the panel. So it kind of takes the paint away as you tighten it down and it digs into the panel. Uh, so that way every single panel is connected uh, together and then I'll just run, um, you know, I'll just, I'll just connect uh, a ground wire somewhere to one of these panels at the end and run it to my uh, system ground over here. Actually, that's wrong. I have to run it from here into the main breaker. There's only supposed to be one point where everything connects to the ground, uh, the system ground. So I have to connect it in that panel and then it'll go from there to the system ground. You don't want two grounds. Uh, it's kind of a complex topic. Well, it's fun, but uh, basically you can create circulating, uh, like if lightning strikes nearby in the ground over there, it can go, um, so like say I had a separate ground for the solar array, um, and like my house was over there and I had my main ground over there. If this was grounded into the ground, uh, and there was a lightning strike somewhere nearby, you could cause, you know, a circuit through the ground, basically where it could connect to one ground wire through your solar, uh, and then all the way to the house and then down again, and it could just keep going and it could be really bad. So that's why they say you only want one single point. So the neutral is connected to the ground there. Uh, and then everything is connected to the, the system ground right there. Um, the earth ground. So, that's uh that's pretty much it um yeah those clips were those clips were such a pain because because you had to get um you had to get the panel in and then you had to get that bracket up and you know it's like just as wide as a finger so i had to kind of like push up uh and hold the bracket and then once i got the bracket in place then this was good but then sometimes it was off center or like cocked a little bit so i'd have to fix the top but then the top would make this fall out or make this fall out or make the panel slide down so then i had to readjust it but then sometimes <laughs> when i push it back up one of those clamps fell out of the hole so it was it was kind of a a, a fun ordeal um so nine panels in a row, I think I lied, I, I said 10. Uh, 10 is theoretically what my um, inverter could handle. It could handle actually three strings of 10 panels, but for safety margins, you want like a 10% a, a uh, margin on voltage. And so if I string uh, all of those panels together, um, so, uh, but anyway, if you look at voltage at, so you have to do this calculation, voltage at max, uh, no, open circuit voltage, uh, 40. So this is the voltage base when it's operating at 100% uh, flow. Um, 
ideal conditions, you're going to have that voltage, but you have to account for this voltage. So 10 of those panels would be 400 volts. Um, and really you want, um, you want a little bit more margin of that because my open circuit margin was 450, which technically I could do. Uh, it, it's like right on the line. Um, I, as far as what's what's safe or not so nine panels will put me well under that 400 uh volts connected because you know when you connect every panel uh it's just like a battery it pretty much literally is a battery because it's dc well, uh, well it's not a battery but it's a, the electricity flow works the same way where uh when you connect them in series and that's why i don't know you saw me turning the panels it's because they have to go from the positive uh to the negative of on the new panel, or sorry, this is the positive and that's the negative. Um, so that way, every single panel that I do, it adds together the voltage, but the current stays the same. And the reason why you wanna do that uh, as much as possible, because if you connect them all in parallel, then you're increasing the current, but you're not increasing the voltage, and current is actually what causes the heat loss and, um, the heat loss and circuits to trip and you have to have bigger gauge wire uh etc so it, it just gets more costly the the more amperage you have um so anyway that's why you want the the more voltage so yeah i'll connect those tomorrow anyway thanks again guys uh got a pretty good pretty good shelter here i'll be able to um park at least the the front of the tractor under here um i'll be able to park I think the truck will fit under there, under that beam. I'm not sure, but at least I could get the, you know, the hood and the windshield and the glass out. Uh, so park it a little bit undercover um, in the shade. So that'd be kind of nice for the truck to be able to do that. Uh, and then be able to get that tractor under. I'm not sure if the canopy will fit. I might have to do a little adjusting there. Or I can do like we did for the combine and just dig dig a little uh, hole out so it, it fits a little bit under under that beam. So, yeah, anyway, I'm not trying to get the whole thing in there, just, just enough. Uh, so, that is, actually, those gloves, those gloves were drying. Let's go grab those. I don't need those sitting out here and getting rained on. The whole point was to dry them off today. Okay, so, I will uh, hook things up tomorrow, and I'll, yeah, have a grand old time. See you later.